Welcome to My Own Devices, where Dave is constantly on the lookout for value and synergy in modern and vintage hi-fi gear. Is it possible that this could become your favourite YouTube channel? He's going to keep trying until it is. Nostalgia. Nostalgia can evoke very strong emotions. I've personally experienced waves of nostalgic feelings revisiting places I knew very well in my younger days, but I haven't been to in many years. Sometimes nostalgia can hit a person when encountering a favorite toy from childhood, a piece of clothing, a video game, or a record, or a sporting memory. Looking at family photo albums can really get to you as well. People love to look back into the past and recall all the interesting and wonderful people, places, and things they've experienced. Vintage car shows and museums are popular with the public as automobiles hold a very special place in our culture. They, they represent independence, freedom, and the sensation of speed. It's a beautiful combination of form and function that has the ability to transport us to new and exciting places. Cars can be a vivid expression of our personality, values, and ambitions. And like fashion, you can wear a car like clothing in a way. Cars and trucks can also be appreciated as amazing feats of technology and engineering. And old cars like these remind us of how wonderful things were in the past and at the same time how far we've come. Vintage cars, motorcycles, bicycles, toys, cameras, and electric gadgets can really evoke strong feelings of a simpler time when new technologies were fresh and exciting. And for a certain small percentage of individuals like me, remembering my first good hi-fi system brings back extremely fond memories. You know, after getting my first part-time job, age 16, and earning the minimum wage of $2.25 an hour, my first goal was to save up to buy a decent hi-fi system. The $75 mostly plastic Emerson all-in-one wasn't getting it done anymore. I visited a local hi-fi dealer and the well-seasoned salesman showed me a respectable system priced in the six to $700 range, a princely sum in the 1970s, and I was only making, uh, taking home under $50 a week, so it took a few months to save up. The salesman suggested the 25 watt per channel Morantz 2225 receiver, a belt drive Technics SL23 turntable with a gold ring cartridge, and a brand of speakers I'd never heard of, Hartley. He explained that Hartley had been around for like 50 years, and as a local speaker company, they represented an excellent value compared to the popular mainstream brands. And you know, I must have demoed them and was impressed. I don't remember, but because of that, that's what I brought home. I loved that system as much as my father hated it. His office den was right next to my bedroom, and I tortured him daily playing my Bowie and ELP, Nazareth, and Led Zeppelin records at high volume. He often burst into my room yelling at me to turn it down. Man, he was real square. This system got me through the last couple years of high school, and then I hauled it and my record collection to art college in Philadelphia. I was one of only a few students in the dorm who had a decent hi-fi, so my small room hosted a number of parties during my, during my freshman year. After college, I moved back home and started to pursue a career as an illustrator. I decided at some point, after I saved some money, to upgrade my gear, so I sold off that old system and I made a, unfortunately made a series of horrible hi-fi mistakes until I bought a system of Haffler separates, a Luxman tuner, Ohm Walsh two speakers, and a Thorin's turntable. Fast forward almost 40 years, and then I, I see a Technics SL23 turntable for sale locally, and suddenly I get that feeling of nostalgia, and it overcame me, and I had to buy it. It's kind of a budget model Technics, not the 
one of the more desirable and pricier direct drive models like the SL1300, but pretty good. Very reliable, semi-automatic belt drive, rock solid speed, and has a smaller footprint. I have searched for a Marantz 2225 receiver locally, and one came up for sale very recently for $450. But I didn't see spending that kind of money as being feasible. I do already own the earlier and more popular 2230. The 2225 has the revised styling with the larger plastic window and the balance control slider. Marantz didn't sell that many 2225s compared to some of the other receivers, so they are a bit rare now. The Marantz 2230 was a very popular receiver in the mid 1970s. It's rated at 30 watts per channel and has a fantastic reputation, a real favorite among Marantz aficionados. The most difficult component to find are the Hartley speakers. Hartley was a very old speaker manufacturer that was founded in Great Britain during the 1920s. In 1953, H.A. Hartley, the founder, sold the company to a New York-based individual but retained ties to the new company, Hartley Products Corporation. The offices eventually moved to New Jersey, with manufacturing taking place in Michigan, USA. During the 1950s, 60s, and 70s, Hartley loudspeakers were regarded as a highly innovative brand. The white Luth driver is still considered to be a revolutionary innovation in speaker design and highly coveted by audio enthusiasts. However, Hartley never achieved the level of popularity of Acoustic Research, Bose, KLH, Polk, Infinity, or JBL. And by the late 70s, the writing was on the wall that Hartley wasn't going to be able to compete properly in the ever-competitive mainstream marketplace. So they packed up and moved to North Carolina to continue as a niche component manufacturer. I had pretty much given up believing I could find a pair of Zodiacs, and, but then to my complete surprise, I saw a pair of Zodiac 75s listed locally for $75. And from what I recall, mine were the Zodiac 76s, but looking at old issues of Stereo, Stereo Review magazine, the Zodiacs remained mostly unchanged from the 74s to the 78s. Only the price went up. It's hard to really know as there is scarce information about Hartley speakers online these days. Unfortunately, I didn't do an adequate testing of the speakers. I guess I was too excited. And when I hooked them up at home, the right tweeter was blown. Unfortunately, there's no model number stamped anywhere on the tweeter. I understood it was a Philips made model and it took a bit of time to find a vintage one that was visually similar to mine. And I bought one that looked correct on eBay, but when it arrived, I could easily see and feel that the magnet of the original is noticeably larger and heavier than the replacement. But since it fits the hole, I decided to try it out anyway. It, and it sounds okay, but it's a bit more rolled off in the high frequencies compared to the left one. So it's not perfect, but acceptable under these circumstances. My original grills were foam like this, but they didn't have this, this pattern. They were more like that. They kind of look more like that. In the front, they might have had a little emblem here on the bottom, but uh, from what I recall. But uh, this had the same, these had the same problems that mine did. They, they were sort of, sort of supposed to stay in through, just through uh, a little bit of friction around the edges, but they're always sagging and falling off like these are. These cabinets are, are big and they're heavy. And they're well made. It's rather thick uh, MDF or particle board. Real walnut veneer on these. I had to give these a Howard restore finish and they look pretty good now. Uh, what's interesting about these, they were done, these are done in mirror image so the, and they recommend they put the tweeters on the outside so the other speaker has the tweeter on the on this side. It's a 10 inch paper woofer and a, a one inch, I think one inch kind of a polypropylene or something tweeter in there. I don't know what that's made out of. 
but the, uh, they're fairly resonant cabinets. There's no internal bracing at all. Here are some of the records I used to listen to back in my high school days. Yeah, mostly standard mainstream rock music. Hey, I grew up in the New Jersey suburbs. It wasn't until a few years later that my music selection became more varied and eclectic. It's all hooked up now and I'm giving this system a good listen to with a variety of my old favorite LPs. Okay, it's not an exact copy of my old system, more, like, more of an approximation. The turntable is identical, but I don't own a gold ring cartridge and I have no idea of which model it was anyway. The receiver is not the same, it's a couple years older and 5 more watts per channel and the the speakers are very close, perhaps a year or two older. Well then, what's my verdict? How does it sound? In a word, mid-rangey. <laughs> the mid-frequencies are fairly pronounced. Vocals, guitars, keyboards are right there, up front. Very smooth and very pleasant. The really low bass is lacking, but the mid-bass makes frequent appearances. The high treble frequencies are less pronounced as well. This rig does not present the last word in resolution. You know, I recently watched an interview with Daryl Wilson of Wilson Audio and he made the analogy using a photograph of a mountain with trees. A lower resolution photo of the mountain can give the impression of a mountain with trees, but you can't actually see the individual trees, branches, and leaves as you can with a higher resolution photo. This system is like a low resolution, low resolution image compared to my other systems where the music is more clearly defined and detailed. Can you enjoy a lower resolution image? Sure, as long as it's not overly dark, overly bright, or too contrasty. The resonant speaker cabinet does add noticeable coloration to the sound and it makes me wonder if adding some cross bracing would improve things a bit. It definitely sounds vintage and it's not at all unpleasant to listen to. It probably sounded a bit better when it was all new and fresh rather than almost 45 years old. Does it still rock? Yes it does. Remember, by 1977 standards it was a respectfully good entry-level hi-fi system. We're all a bit spoiled now as the quality of entry-level gear is so high in comparison. Maybe it's not as great as I remember it, you know. In life, that's often the case. Thank you for watching all the way to the end, and please don't forget to like and subscribe if you appreciate this kind of stuff. Thank you.